This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, he's taking a look at the iconic 80s arsenal of Robocop Rogue City, which features one of his favourite fictional weapons. Here's, this is what we're here for. This is the Auto 9. Here is... A real auto? Not really. It's not really real. This is the airsoft replica. Fascinating movie gun, second only for me to the Pulse Rifle from Aliens. Make sure to subscribe and let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comments section below. But without further ado, it's over to Jonathan and the guns of Robocop Rogue City. Seems like a very high rate of fire and some very geometric case ejection straight out to the side. It also seems to be weirdly ejecting two streams of cases at the same time. Closed bolts, I mean, the Tech 9 is in reality a closed bolt semi automatic pistol. People have converted them to automatic. Overall, it looks okay, but yeah, that case ejection is weird. And some of the weapon models are a touch rough when well, they lack in sort of fidelity. They certainly make up for in uh, respecting Robocop's legacy and uh, feel. Yeah, I almost feel I should, I should caveat all my comments with, <coughs> I don't care because it's Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, instinctively, I don't like seeing Robocop use a Tech 9 because it feels like it's beneath him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially as he already has the Auto 9. I can't work out what in-game advantage that gives you, and the real-world advantage would be approximately nil. Very weirdly, I'm obsessing about the case ejection, I know, but the cases look like they're coming out backwards. They absolutely are coming they out are backwards. 100% coming out backwards. I just freeze-framed. Astonishing. That's going to distract the hell out of me. I mean, I guess in, in mitigation, famously, Hecker and Koch did that once with a marketing photo. And that brochure, if you have it, it's worth a lot of money now. They put the rounds in the magazine for this promo promotional picture in backwards. Having them eject backwards out of a gun is something I haven't seen ever. The Uzi, of course, a bit of a similar niche to the Tech 9 when you've got your Tech 9 running automatic like that. Looks quite small in his hand, but then his hands are huge, famously. I can't tell if it's operating open bolt as it should be because the bolt, ah, uh, no, it's not. So the bolt is staying still when he cocks it. And weirdly, the charging handle is moving. So the cocking handle on the Uzi should stay where it is and the bolt should be open on firing and should open obviously between shots because that's how guns work. Doesn't look like he's using the magazine release, the magazine catch, but I could be missing that. On the Uzi, I didn't pick one up. We've, we've covered them a number of times. You really got to use the thumb of your support hand to press the magazine catch, rip out the magazine. There's no drop free. There's no ability to press a, a magazine catch to even try to drop it free. So magic mags on this Uzi. The rate of fire is far too high for this Uzi. The Uzi is like five, 600 RPM. First firearm I ever shot was an Uzi. Nice sedate rate of fire. Very easy to handle. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't it, guys. Sorry. And the cases are coming out the top of the gun through the sheet metal. This is paining me, as cool as the game is. Now, the Cobra Assault Cannon. I believe is what this is supposed to be. Well, it's we, it's got both the Barrett and the Cobra, oh. so I've included both. Okay, well that's interesting because this isn't right for a Barrett assault rifle. You've done yeah, this deliberately, uh, Dave. You I, deliberately I showed me that. <laughs> well, I had to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Some people will argue there's no such thing as an assault rifle. Those people are wrong. However, <laughs> it is a vague term. It isn't a very helpful term. It definitely doesn't <laughs> apply to this. This is an anti-materiel rifle. It is not an assault rifle by any definition. I think they have shared models. Without, I haven't seen the Cobra yet, but I think they must have shared gun models between the Barrett and the Cobra, which makes sense if they have, because the movie Cobra Assault Cannon, that was literally just a dressed up Barrett. Barrett with some bits stuck to it. Very few people in 1987 knew what a Barrett was, relatively speaking. So they put a few bits on it, fancy looking scope, called it the Cobra Assault Cannon, like it was a brand new future weapon. So including the Barrett in the game, is weird and yes i'm right they have used the same gun model for both guns and it has weird greeblies and stuff on it that are not on the real barrett let's prove that 
Yes, I do need to lift more or even at all. However, the Barrett M82 is a very straightforward, very good design, but a very straightforward sheet metal receiver in two parts, two main, two assemblies once it's assembled. This gun looks more like a machined thing with, with weird stuff going on at the front there. The vents are different. They've obviously tried to idealize. I think they did this with the, um, with the Terminator resistance rifle as well, which also irked me. Sorry, guys, I love the game. And so they've done an idealized version of the Barrett that's also the Cobra Assault Cannon. So it looks a bit different futuristic. So I guess it's not, it's not meant to be a Barrett. It's just that it has a more Barrett style conventional scope on it. And then the Assault Cannon has the actual movie look to it. I'd have to go back to the movie, or at least to IMFDB, um, to compare in detail to see if those changes they've made actually do match the prop. I'm not sure they do from memory. Now, the not Auto 9. This is a really quite dodgy looking, sorry, developers, not Desert Eagle. Now the real story of the of the movie gun of the Auto 9 that we're going to see hopefully at some point is um, they were going to use the Desert Eagle because it was the the big gun of the day. It makes sense that a big powerful machine like this could handle or part part man part machine <laughs> or cop could handle this thing and make it a practical handgun in a way that basically no one can in real life. Not for not for combat. But they found that it looked small. It looked too short and stubby in his in his big glove rubber hand and uh, the, the rubber finger wouldn't fit in the trigger guard. So the armor of Randy Moore had, the gun we're about to see, which I won't spoil, literally in his car, because he had it as a, a self a self protection car gun, and that became the Auto 9. The Desert Eagle did show up in its um, sort of chrome finish in an office environment, appropriately, is what I'm seeing it in now, used by, well, one of the bad guys. Overall, it's it's Desert Eagle-y. <laughs> it's not changed so much that you can't recognize it, but it, it's, Little bit modern Call of Duty level of change where it almost feels like they're trying to avoid some perceived legal concern. I don't know. One thing that I noticed as playing, it's called the 50 cal heavy pistol in game. But if you pick up ammunition for it, it says in the little corner 0.44 ammo. Yeah, I wonder if that's because I can't remember. Don't don't sue me, guys, but I there's every chance the Desert Eagle in the movie is a 44. And I think the Desert Eagle in the movie is a 357, which makes it even oh. stranger. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, scratch that. My theory is is clearly not correct. That's just a weird mistake. I thought maybe they'd kept that in the game script, as it were. But yeah, Hammer Down the whole time is just famously, well, not famous, only famously if you watch these videos, really. Uh, not right. Drop it, scum. Here's, this is what we're here for. This is the Auto 9. Weird amount of debate over why it's called the Auto 9. I thought it's pretty damn obvious why it's called that. It's a nine, based on a 9mm pistol, so it's probably 9mm in-universe. Here is a real Auto... Not really. It's not really real. This is the Airsoft replica. Uh, so it's based on a 9mm pistol. I'll show you in a second. And it's automatic. All three round burst, if you want to be um, super pedantic. And I do. Ah, okay. That's firing an automatic. So is it select fire? So across the game, and th this is something that I actually really like it, about um, Robocop Rogue City, is because the Auto 9 is the iconic Robocop gun, the game gives you the ability to upgrade it, to, to give it like a few more features. Unlike a lot of other games where your starting gun sort of skills out, it remains your go-to gun throughout the entire game. In universe, it's explained as you can install like old school PCBs on the gun, which allow you to increase damage, give it automatic fire, give it single shot. Technically, it can become select fire, but the nice thing that I did appreciate about it is that the game lets you make sure it is useful for the entire story. Because how could Robocop Sword 9 not be? Excellent design decision. Yeah, no, that's music to my ears, to be quite honest. I was very concerned that this would get relegated. Randy Moore worked on this with uh, Ed uh, Neumeyer, terrible pronunciation, I suspect, and Paul Verhoeven as well, I believe, to create this, this iconic look with this additional sort of muzzle weight extension, a screw-in extended barrel, interestingly, because it only has to fire on blank. And they just added this semi-gutter sight housing with a with a pistol sight inside it, because otherwise, well, your Beretta sights have been negated. But the other addition is this 
extended grip to, to fit Robocop's hand better and also make it look different. In case anyone doesn't know what a 93R, whoops, I've said it. Beretta 93R is what this is. Now let me stop showing you this plastic thing and let me show you a real 93R. So this is the gun that Randy Moore had in his car. I don't know if he had the butt stock or not. Let's get rid of that because that was the first step in turning it into the Auto 9. I'm sure a lot of you know this from other video games in its unmodified form. And we can actually show it side by side. It's substantially, it is the same gun. They've removed the folding foregrip, which folds up. That's why, so this was great for Robocop's massive finger. That's originally so that you can get two fingers into it. Added that extension, that extended barrel, ports in the end for that, um, what they call a bow tie shaped flash. So that's a real full practical effect in camera. Now, they also, in the movie, Mr. Moore came up with a seven round ratchet somehow. I'm not sure how he managed to fit that in, but he did. And a full, full auto version as well. So the fact that full auto is in the game does reflect the movie. Uh, so the movie guns did three or seven or full auto, depending on how they were set up before the scene. Fascinating movie guns, second only for me to the pulse rifle from Aliens. Nothing says 80s sci-fi like a plastic-coated bullpup, in this case, shotgun. So this is the Mossberg 500 series, but it's in a bullpup chassis. Makes it look like a totally different gun, and of course that's why they love that sort of thing for these types of movies. It's not particularly faithful, unless ours has a different carry handle, but I'm not aware, and I'm not aware of this one. Ours is polymer, and it is solid and a solid back. The one in the game, completely different shape, looks like it's meant to be metal. So we don't have a, I mean, it's a good representation other than that, I think. I hate to say this, but it almost doesn't matter because it's like a future gun. It's not necessarily the exact same thing as this. Now, uh, amusing fact on this one is, so on the side, we've got the Mossberg logo and we have a lot of text. Like I didn't order a book with my shotgun, but I got one anyway and it says, Shoot from right shoulder only. Store gun and ammunition separately. Patent pending. I was just about to ask if that's on the real version because when you reload it in the game, that is also right in your face. That's very cool. So it is. So it is. I missed that. Now it's not in a inset panel like it is on the gun. Very curious that they chose to reflect that detail. I, I'm guessing they were as amused by it as I was and thought they'd include it, even though they're not being slavish to the details. Definitely has the right look. Very chunky pistol grip, trigger guard, buttstock. Well, not buttstock technically. Really doesn't look like the gun that's inside it. It has a grip safety and that pistol grip pump. Is the real version pump action rather than semi-automatic? You know, I completely overlooked that. Yes. <laughs> there is no way to make this semi-automatic. It is pump only all day long because it's just a Mossberg 500 in a party dress. I am at least glad for all their weapon choices. They have stuck with an 80s aesthetic. Very 80s. Unfortunately, in this case, very wrong as well. But I think it's quite deliberate. I, th I think they've gone for a sort of alternate reality HK G11, because this is clearly meant to be a G11. Magazine, is that the, the crank to cock it? One thing about that crank that struck me is quite, um, like this, this, this would suit Robocop more than it would a normal human arm. Demonstrations of the G11 having to crank it and start again. Because he's got a mechanized arm, he can just spin it in one action. That's a really nice touch. I can't remember what, how much of a crank the G11 needs. We don't have a real G11. So I, I have handled several G11s in, in the same place. They're like buses. You don't have any and then 12 come along at once. We only have this wooden mock-up, unfortunately. But it is a wooden mock-up from the actual G11 development program. So this is the earlier version. So this had a, um, a crank that would flip out the buttstock and you would then use the cock in that axis. The later version that this video game version is based on has, does have that spin crank on the side. And I cannot remember, and I'm not going to check now, just how much you need to turn it. But the fact that he's using his revolving 360 owl, owl well, the owls can't really do that, but <laughs> his revolving wrist is, is pretty cool. But they're not, they're not saying this is a G11. This is, I guess, a follow-up to the G11 or a parallel universe G11. It's much more cyberpunk in its look. On the model, it says that it's chambered in 45 ACP, which struck me as odd as well both as a round that's being used in a gun like this but also a round that they think will take down robocop okay that's ridiculous on so many levels i almost don't know where to start 
So clearly based on the G11, G11 used 4.6 millimeter caseless blocks <laughs> as its ammo. This is caseless too, because it's not ejecting any rounds. So to say this is 45 ACP makes zero sense from a technical perspective. Yeah, bit curious. Also, a bit of Picatinny rail creeping in there. There is no Picatinny rail in 1987. There is Weaver rail, but that doesn't have those multiple stops. I think they're falling for the trap here of Picatinny rail makes stuff look futuristic or at least contemporary. And so they put a strip on top of the site. <laughs> Okay, HKG3, or something close to one. Very weird reload there. Magazine off, magazine on, pull the charging handle, and then it, there's no noise of it going forwards, but it does go forwards. Cartridge case is coming out the right way round on this one. That's good. There's no lock and slap, which is a missed opportunity with any HK in my book. And the rear sight is odd. Kind of looks like he's ripping mags out and shoving them in, not using the catch, but it's a little bit harder to tell. You don't really get the sense of this being a more powerful rifle. But I guess you wouldn't, because his his hands and arms are going to just absorb the recoil. So it's not going to move like it would if it was in a human's hand. A little bit underwhelming, I suppose. Uh, I don't know if it's doing... I'm, I'm hoping it's doing more damage for being a 7.62 rather than a 5.56 or a pistol caliber. Right, next up, an M60. Odd choice. I wonder if this is a generic 80s movie choice. It's definitely not a Robocop movie gun. It looks a bit weird as well. The barrel's sticking out on its own with nothing attached to it. There's definitely something to be said for Robocop and an M60. It, it is inherently cool. <laughs> so I think we can allow it. Um, I'm just not convinced that, that's, that that looks right. I've not got a side view of it. We should have a bi bipod and gas parts attached to the barrel. And I can't, I mean, certainly there's no bipod and it looks like the gas parts are too far back. But you get the overall sense of this belt fed nonsense. It's almost a shame that they haven't got the loose belt of Rambo just with his hand and his, and his arm and he's holding, he's holding up the belt Rambo style. It's slightly disappointing in a way that it's in the box case. It's gonna go boom! Thanks for watching, guys. That was a, a special treat for me. Big fan of the movie, movies to some extent. Uh, looking forward to playing the game myself, getting this uh, effectively a preview as far as I'm concerned. Love the fact that the Auto 9 is so prominent. Do, after this, if you'd like to watch um, videos on our channel, the Royal Armouries channel, please do. Um, check out our new websites, uh, check out our museums if you're able to do that. Uh, but we will be here again for you next week.